Hello and welcome to the latest wealthmanagement.com fast chat. My name is Diana Britton. I'm the managing editor of wealthmanagement.com. And I'm here today talking with Jeff Kripke. He's the senior vice president, portfolio manager, and head of the US core team at Amundi. And we're going to be talking about inflation and the markets. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Jeff, can you start with, uh, you know, how have equities historically fared among, you know, rising inflation? Sure, that's a great question in today's market. Equities as an asset class are very volatile, as you know. It goes up and down in economic news. And inflation is certainly a very important part of the economic news as it impacts businesses as well as consumers. Generally, in a modest rising inflationary environment, it's very positive for equities. Companies are able to raise prices, consumers are able to buy goods at a reasonable price, and the economy grows in a steady fashion. However, when inflation expectations and inflationary pressures rise dramatically, such as the current market, it can create a very volatile environment, and equities tend to trend down. So it's important to pick the right stocks allocated in the right sectors with the right investment vehicle. That's great. I mean, so, you know, as you know, we're currently in, uh, you know, facing a lot of uncertainties in the market right now. What is your outlook and how are you positioning your portfolio in light of those views? Sure. That's another great question. In today's volatile market, um, portfolio managers have to be uh, quick to change their assumptions on the market and the economic earnings, as well as the companies, what they're hearing from. And as we started the year, the portfolio has changed a little bit due to the increased inflation expectations and inflationary pressures that we're experiencing, not only from our monetary and fiscal stimulus coming out of the COVID depression, but also the war in Ukraine caused by the Russian invasion. And so these have caused commodity markets to skyrocket, causing input prices to manufacturers as well as a sort of resignation, as we've called it, coming out of COVID, where workers haven't come full force back into the labor market. So there's been inflationary pressures on wages for employers, as well as higher input costs. Now, what we're seeing is that these inflationary pressures are starting to impact the consumer. So we're starting to see a dramatic slowdown, which is what the Fed is trying to intend as it raises interest rates. Now, at what level? Will the Fed go to? That's a very important point to try and figure out. And so we think that the markets will be volatile into 2024 as the Fed increases interest rates rather slowly. My preference would be a more dramatic increase and just get it over with so the markets can heal more quickly. Now, the fund, in order to deal with the rising inflationary pressures, has increased its exposure to commodities and materials. And so these are companies that are producing the commodities and materials that they're able to sell at higher prices as inputs to companies, manufacturers, as well as other service providers. Now, we believe that in high inflationary pressure, you need to have assets that can go up in inflationary times. And commodities and materials have tended to historically go up when inflation is rising. So we've made a concerted effort to increase our exposure to these sectors. And in doing so, we have taken money out of the financials and technology. And so what we've seen is that historically, when the economy slows, loans tend to decrease, demand for loans decline, and there's pressure on consumers and paying back some, maybe some of their bills that they had sort of leveraged up and what they thought were the good times. So we've reduced our financial exposure and technology is an interesting area because you have high beta and low beta technology stocks. And so what I consider to be the high beta, sort of the mid cap uh, companies that have come out of the market when the market was flush with cash, they had no earnings or free cash flow. They had liquidity issues because they always had to come back to the market to raise capital and they were trading on multiples of, of revenue. And so our portfolio has been geared toward technology companies that have growth, that have high market share, but are profitable, generate cash, and have great balance sheets. So we have been adding to those sort of GARPY growth names in this environment 
as they've fallen with the rest of the market. And we believe that as we transition from this sort of recessionary environment, that people will start to pay up for growth. And so that is why we are loading up more in our higher quality technology stocks and avoiding some of the uh, you know, higher value technology that really requires high liquidity that we're just not seeing in the marketplace anymore. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I wish we could just sort of get it over with <laughs> the, the volatility. Um, how does, you know, oh, yeah. what does higher inflation mean for growth and or value stocks? And, and how do you migrate across those styles in different environments? That's a great question. And so the Pioneer Fund is a, is a core fund. And so when the markets are strong, we tend to look for strength stocks, which tends to be more growth related companies. When the market slows down, we tend to gravitate more towards more value type of companies. In this environment, we have tilted more towards value. However, in really a steep inflationary environment and a slowing economy, it hits all stocks. And so you see both growth and value stocks declining. Now, growth declines because the terminal value is, is really out there into the future years. So when you discount the value at a higher interest rate, the current value is lower. So that makes logical sense. With the value stocks, it's not the same way. Most of their value is generated in current quarters. But when you have high inflation, you have high margin pressure. And in order to keep your margins, you have to raise prices. And this creates a decline in demand. There's a substitution effect where people and companies can find other products that may be similar to yours at a lower cost or they just may stop buying altogether. So value stocks will decline as their revenues decline, as demand declines because of the higher interest rates and the recession that we're currently in. So the portfolio really seeks to own high quality, sustainable businesses, number one and number two market share that tend to be global. And so they have the revenue, they have the expenses where they can cut and they can take advantage of the duress that more mid-market or foreign companies that don't have the U.S. capabilities uh, will experience during this, de this recession or possibly depression. So we like companies that can ride through it because they generate profits and cash flow and even maybe take advantage of the duress by buying up companies or segments of companies that they have to sell in order to, uh, you know, as, as they're not able to compete against better execution companies. Okay, great. Um, you know, I know there are there are many sustainable strategies and funds out there in the market. What makes your approach different, and and what sets your Pioneer Fund apart from others in the marketplace? Well, the Pioneer Fund is the second oldest mutual fund in the country. It was founded in 1928, and had a sort of a sustainable, socially responsible focus. It didn't invest in tobacco, gambling. And, and part of that, and alcohol, part of that was because it, they were sin stocks. And they really didn't provide any benefit. So the fund seeks to do good while doing well. And we've continued that tradition of the fund of owning high quality, sustainable companies. Well, thanks, Jeff. Those are some great insights, I think, for this uh, market environment we're in right now. Um, I'd like to thank our guest, Jeff Kripke um, from Amundi um, for joining us. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for joining this wealthmanagement.com fast chat. We'll see you next time.